My name is Mimi Ito. I'm a cultural anthropologist and a learning scientist, and I'm also co-founder of a nonprofit called Connected Camps, which offers online project-based learning experiences for kids. I think in a lot of ways, technology is already supporting a lot of opportunities that are improving the quality of life for people. Uh, some examples are very small things like the ability for a teenager who has just left the house to stay in touch with their parents or caregivers and the immense emotional support that you get from just knowing that even when you've taken the first steps to independence, you can still text your mom and you can even do it without your friends noticing and just get that little bit of social support. Uh, research has shown that that's actually incredibly helpful for young people's well-being and their ability to uh, face new challenges. There's small examples like that. There's big examples too of young people who have done amazing things. Um, you know, mobilizing movements like Black Lives Matter, using social media as a key component of the work that they're doing. Um, you have young creators who are inspiring people on YouTube, some of the most um, famous uh, creators of online video are actually very young. And these are not opportunities that would have been available to them uh, before the advent of the network world. Uh, you see kids learning to code and creating game mods and uh, forms of technology at a younger and younger age. So these are all examples of opportunities, big and small, that are already there that young people are taking advantage of. I think the important thing to realize is that you know, young people have been living in the future, uh, but their futures are quite divergent. So, while there's some young people who may be saving the world and becoming famous online and uh, changing the world through uh, their demand for social justice, there's many more young people who aren't doing that. And what we found in our research is that these extraordinary cases of kids really pushing these opportunities to achieve amazing things are more the exception than the rule. I think the smaller benefits, the everyday benefits, are happening for kids everywhere, whether it's being able to text a parent or stay in touch with a friend or just being able to uh, keep in touch with a romantic partner who you're not living with or can't have private space with. These are the little everyday benefits that I think many more young people are experiencing every day. One really critical thing to recognize is that young people don't experience the digital world in the same way. And that the differences in young people's experience are just as big as the differences that grown-ups have. And those differences track along existing identities and power differentials, whether it's uh, at an international scale or around socioeconomic issues or race or gender or um, sexual orientation that the online world is reproducing more and more those power differentials, those inequalities uh, that kids um, experience in their everyday lives. Uh, this can take the form of you know, kids of color in the U.S. experiencing a lot more harassment and hostility. It can take the form of um, lower income kids not having Wi-Fi to do their homework in an environment where schools expect them to be online. I think the important thing is that we have to design and support the most vulnerable groups. The more we simply build technology to scale and cater to the majority, the more that the more vulnerable and less privileged groups, uh, the gap widens. So I think it's quite important that understanding inequality is fundamental to how we think about progress, that designing for a subgroup is actually essential to making sure that the ecosystem overall is healthy for everybody.
One of the big lessons that has come up again and again in observing teens' use of technology is they remind us what the experience of using and experimenting technology is, both when it's um, kind of a blank slate and you don't have preconceptions about it, but also they remind us of what technology can mean for empowerment because young people are at a period of life where they don't have a lot of power yet, but they're super smart and they have a lot of energy. So what they do when that energy gets applied to something new and experimental, they really uh, latch onto technology as a tool for empowerment and self-expression. And that is an incredibly powerful formula that often as grown-ups, we're not quite as hungry for that as we get older in life. So we're not striving. We're not trying to uh, make our mark in the world in quite the same way. We're not trying to discover who we are. And so having technology to experiment at that age when you're searching, you're seeking, you're looking for things, you're trying to find your people, it's a powerful source of um, innovation, progress, new ideas, uh, new forms of experimentation that I think we all have benefited from.